What's the longest parade you've ever been to? I think this might be mine. Hey there everybody, how's it going? It's Jessie from Jessie and Marie Does Stuff coming to you on this Monday, July 31st. It's Harry Potter's birthday. Uh, to do my whip parade. Woohoo, whip parade. I know, we're all excited, but like, real talk right now. If you think you're going to get hungry over the next couple hours, you should go get something to snack on. If you've got a bunch of back stitching to do, pull that out and work on that. Um, if you've got a bunch of laundry to fold, do that. Because this is going to be a great opportunity. I'm just going to yammer on about my 79 projects. And um, yeah, so here's a great opportunity. You can just listen to somebody else talk about a bunch of projects and probably repeat over and over, I miss this and I want to get back to this. Uh, I can imagine that that's going to happen a lot today. Um, so yeah, now's a good time to do that. Um, I would also suggest maybe something to drink. I've got mine, um, but this is never going to be enough because it's never going to be enough. Um, and we're going to do this. So here's, here's our game plan for attacking this monstrosity. Um, I have split things up into several sections. Um, so I'm going to run through my year of whips because they are kept separate from the horde. <laughs> um, and then I'm going to do, per the request of Lisa from Lisa Stitching and Such, and um, Anne from Anne P. Um, I am going to do my Miras, my Noras, and my Hates. And then I'm going to run through the alphabet on everything else. Um, so yeah, quite a lot to do. Uh, the good news is my Year of Whips is 12 projects. My Hades are 7. I've got 9 Miras and 4 Noras. So that's like half right there. Cool. Um, so before I get into start showing things, I've had this question come up. A few times um, recently and so I thought that I would go over it real quickly um, and the question has been how do you organize your stuff um, and so the first thing you need to know is that I don't have fancy project bags um, watching these wet parades I got really jealous and I wanted to order all of the project bags but I, I couldn't do it because I have, um, I'm very particular <laughs> and I would need all of them to have their own project bag and to order 80 project bags for what I currently have on the go, mm -mm, mm -mm. I haven't won the lottery yet so that's not happening. So I am going a bit of a cheap and easy route. Um, I live currently in a rather small house. Uh, we are all on one floor. It is technically three bedrooms. Um, I think we're at 1,800 square feet. I think that if I were to lay them all out, all of my projects, I would have more project, more fabrics than uh, floor space. So I have to also keep them concise and compact um, as best I can. So that's sort of my was my thought process in in getting all of this organized. So. Um, I'm just going to grab this one. I have, okay, I'm going to show you it first. Oof. Okay, so I have these boxes that I got from um, Hobby Lobby. And uh, they've got a nice handle here on both sides. And they are, I want to say that the inside dimensions... Actually, I might still have a tag attached to one. I do. Uh, the inside dimensions are uh, let me think 17 and a half in the longest direction. Uh, they are nine and a half inches tall and they are 15 inches wide. And that's perfect because that means that I can fit one of these in there. Now these are also from Hobby Lobby and they are only available at Hobby Lobby. I'm sure you can get a, chev a black and white chevron basket from just about anywhere, but these 
Memory Keepers are by a Hobby Lobby brand. For the life of me, I can't remember the name of the brand. Anyway, so these are actually built for scrapbookers um, because the dimensions on these are perfect for scrapbook paper pieces. Um, I think they're, they're 12 by 12, which is what you get for the scrapbook paper. Um, so I have like approximately 100 of these total. Uh, and so that's what each of my projects go. Uh, that's where they each go. So you can see I've got chart where, um, where applicable. So if I've got a digital chart, then I just leave that on my iPad. I don't print out a version usually. Uh, if it's in a book, then my books are actually on the sides. I'm not going to be able to show it to you, but I slip them into the sides of the box. And then they are all in here organized alphabetically. I can get give or take, depending on how thick this thing is. This one's pretty easy because there's not a million colors. Um, but like I'm thinking for my heads that are on uh, certain organizational styles and, you know, even keeping track of 90 colors. Um, I can usually fit about 20 to 30 projects in each of these boxes. So that's pretty good. Uh, they're in there pretty snug, but because, no, I guess not 20 to 30, I guess 15 to 20, because I cannot fit all of my whips in there currently. Uh, my year of whips are kept separate, um, both for organization as well as just space. So anyway, so there's that. Uh, that's how I organize my whips. Chart, fabric, needle minder if, um, if it's been assigned, and threads all stuck in there. Uh, so yeah, so that's how, that's how I organize my whips. So I am going to grab the first section, bring it closer to me, because <laughs> I'm surrounded on all sides by these boxes, y'all. And we'll get started showing you. Okay, that. let's get going. So our first segment is going to be uh, Year of Whips, which is also going to include my two projects that I've added in to the rest of the year. Um, so these are the projects that I'm focusing on for the rest of 2017. So um, let's start with the one that I've already shown you. I am not going to reorganize these. Um, on camera, that's going to take too long. So, yeah. Okay, so some of these, like, we've seen recently, but whatever. Um, so this is the Birthstone Dragon Sal by Ingleside Imaginarium, and I'm stitching it on 32 Count Belfast in Sparkling Diamonds by Craft Kitten Fabrics. Gorgeous blues with some hints of pink. Um, August block is going to come out tonight, and I am barely into June, but there's that. I haven't shown this in a while, and I haven't worked on it any even longer. Um, hopefully, hopefully I'll get caught up at some point. Um, I'll be honest, the cells, I am not drawn to them right now. I think I've mentioned that. Just not drawn to them right now. Uh, so, that's that. All right, next, I actually don't have the project, and this is the only one where I don't have the project, fingers crossed. Um, and the reason for that is that I just got it set up on my scroll frame yesterday, and it took entirely too long to get it organized the right way, so um, I'm gonna insert a picture of it where it's at currently. So, uh, Faces of Fairy 201 by Heaven and Earth Designs. Artwork by Jasmine Beckett Griffith. I'm stitching this on 25 Count Lugana one over one full cross, um, as is my standard for my Hades. Uh, I won't mention that again in the Hade section, just, just to let you know. I'm currently working on page three, which is actually my fourth page. My hope is to get caught up, uh, to get that page done before uh, I start the next Hade challenge. Uh, and I'm not entirely confident that I'm doing the next Hade challenge, it just kind of depends on what it is. Um, but we'll see. So um, at some point during the spiel, you will have seen where it's at currently. Okay, next. I'm just pulling these out and I don't know what they are, so this is fun. All right, next we've got the Jingles Collection by Lizzie Kate. This is... Okay, good, that's got it on there. Um, 
I won these charts and the fabric a long time ago, long time ago, like 2014 maybe, from Tara C, who was on Floss Tube for a while, um, and she sent me the whole collection. Uh, so that's the Needle Minder, Sparkly, Christmassy, Mickey. And then here's what the whole thing will look like with all 12 charts stitched together. And the fabric is uh, 32 count amber linen by Wichelt, which has definitely softened up over the years. It's not crazy butter soft, but it's, it's not as stiff as it used to be. So I have finished the first two. I have this grand plan of stitching a block a month. Obviously that's not happening. Um, and so now I'm working on this one down here. I still have some um, extra border details to work on up here, but I skipped onto the block, as you guys know, for the dog days of summer. I am stitching this entirely in the called for threads, except for molasses. It calls for molasses, and I'm using Chris's bonbon. Both are by Weeks Dye Works. But for all intents and purposes, you can't tell the difference. So You'll never know. Unless you're that good at telling threads. Anyway, so there's that. Um, I know we've all said it, but um, yeah, Trisha really influenced everybody on how we're folding things. I am much more cognizant of that. I don't have time to be cognizant of that today, but whatever. Okay. Next. Oh, crowd favorite. And one of my favorites. Hoping to finish this actually in the month of August. Um, so this is Elizabeth by Glendon Place. My first Glendon Place. Um, start, not chart. Love this. Uh, Flapper Girl Needle Minder. You guys know that I'm doing this because my grandma's name is Elizabeth and um, I just think it's really pretty. So da da da. Said that a million and one times over the last what, year and a half? I think I started this for Mania 2016. Thinking, oh yeah, I'll finish that in no time. Yeah, okay, so this is on a 32 count Belfast in Buttercup by Under the Sea Fabrics, a gorgeous, gorgeous yellow. If you're looking for a soft yellow, hit up Leslie because this is, this is awesome. Um, very, very buttery. And this is on a linen, so it dyes even darker on a linen than it would on an even weave. Yeah, that's gorgeous. Um, people have asked me if I'm concerned about that pale yellow on these petals here. Um, if I'm worried because they blend in a lot, and I'm not. Because they are outlined with fuchsia chronic. Uh, so there will be no problems there. And then up top here, these petals are also chronic. That's a topaz. So it's gonna, it'll be just fine. No issues with um, contrast there. So there's that. And I hope I said it's a 32 count Belfast. If you're ever wondering, you can just assume that it's 32 count Belfast. Because that's, that's my jam. Okay. Next, oh, this is a heavy one. Oh yeah, it's a heavy one. Okay. Oh, that's easy. Okay, so this is the Passione Ricamo. Passione Ricamo. I'm gonna have to work on that um, because I feel like I have been mispronouncing that like a dumb American for a very long time. Uh, Mystery Sal. This is uh, Mystery 04. You can see the dates there. That's not the actual dates. This started in 2014 um, and finished up in 2015. I started on time, so that tells you a whole lot of things. Uh, needle minders, my rainbow horned narwhal, gorgeousness, and uh, Dia de los Muertos, mermaid. Okay, this is another well-loved project. Oh, okay. This fabric is 32 count Belfast in Lady of the Lake. This is by Hand Dyed Fabrics by Stephanie. And here we go. 
She's a big girl. She's one of my biggest. This is a fat half of fabric because that's what you need for Passione Ricamo. Passione Ricamo projects. <laughs> yeah, so here's what happened. I kept up with this so well. I have never kept up with a cell like I did with this until the Claws Factory from last year. Um, I was doing such a damn good job keeping up. Even when Laura decided to release three parts at once, I was still like, that's fine, I got it. Keeping up, keeping up. The way that she releases the parts that kind of bounce all over the place, so it wasn't like these top were the first three. It might have been this one and then the one below it. She bounces all over the place, which is kind of cool. Anyway, so I was keeping up real well. And then, because I'm an idiot, <laughs> I was like, oh, skin, one over one, yes, please. Yeah. So I got stalled because skin one over one. I love this, and I cannot wait to have it done so that I can frame it never. Um, because it's a fat half, and so that's going to cost a fortune of money to frame. Um, <laughs> but I just can't wait to have her done. Her tail, arguably my favorite part, although the water looks pretty good too. Um, per Laura Fashion, there's a ton of petite treasure braid, and um, she uses beads, but very few colors of beads. So I need like 3,000 white beads to go on this. Um, but I've talked about it a million times. I'm changing that up a little bit. Okay. Next. Ah, ha, ha, another favorite. Oh, not showing you that part. Forgot that I had done that. Okay. Oh, this book is in here. Oops. Okay, so, Cross Stitch Safari, made famous by Carolyn Mazion. We all know and love. Uh, my needle miter is a gorgeous elephant, but it's buried. Uh, this is my elephants. So, pull it open to what it will look like finished. Hurry up, Jess, there we go. That's what it will look like finished. I meant to tell you guys what my new goals were for some of these, uh, but I've, I've forgotten. So I might write that information down below in editing. Anyway, fabric here is uh, 32 count linen in aqua. This is by Fabric Flare, so it's a printed fabric. An absolute joy to work on. And I'll just tell you this one. My goal is to finish Nikki over here. Uh, she's nicknamed Nikki Minaj because she's got a big butt. Um, and so I'll be finishing her. That's my new goal for the year. I don't have any assumptions that I'm going to finish this whole project by the end of the year. But, oh, isn't that gorgeous? This is going to get some attention here in August. Uh, but I will talk August plans at some other point. So there's that. Okay, are we done yet? No, not even close. Tip of the iceberg. Another crowd favorite. I got a lot of well-loved projects. Okay. My drop stuff off chair over there is getting full very fast. This is gonna be a problem. Okay, so first we have first. Next, we have the Pumpkin Patch Farm Sampler. This is by the Victoria Sampler. This is, there's no reason why this isn't done yet. Um, so this is another project that I'm probably gonna work on in August and maybe finish. This gorgeous jeweled pumpkin is uh, from Gina's Unique Boutique. I was lucky and got in on her first order of them. Um, I think she said she's ordered over 250 of them now. Yeah. Anyway, uh, so there's that. I don't know how I'm going to do this. Okay, this is on 32 Count Belfast in something moon. Harvest moon or winter moon or something. Uh, 
linen by Zweigart. It's just a neutral. For all intents and purposes, it could be platinum or cream. I could call it that, and you guys would never know the difference. Anyway, um, so this is just, it's just so much fun because you get a scene, and then you get a short little uh, specialty stitch band. And this, um, this band here, this stitch right here is one of my favorites. I can't remember what that stitch is called. Waffle, maybe Norwegian waffle? Something like that. Anyway, that was a lot of fun. The pumpkins, holy backstitch Batman, um, including some one over one. And the little girl, I think I remember, I think I mentioned talking about the fact that it looks like she's got a very full diaper. Uh, then we have this band here that features the cat squirrel. Um, the pattern says it's a cat. It looks like a squirrel. Um, and so it's cat squirrel. And the only lazy daisies. Oh no, there's no lazies in that one. Where are the lazies? Oh yeah. Up here. The only lazy daisies I've ever done that I thought looked halfway decent. The ones that I did down here, I don't love. This band is the one that I have changed and I've decided to leave permanent. Yes, all of those characters are headless. It was not charted that way, but I decided to make this just a little bit spooky. And going to the pumpkin patch, there's always a haunted hayride, so yes. And then we have the last large band to do down here, which is another scene of um, somebody selling pumpkins and a barn and then some more specialty stitch bands. This, I think, <laughs> I think I can get done in five or six days um, because the barn is largely NPIs and NPI silks. I don't, generally speaking, pay too much attention to completing one X at a time with NPI silks because they are so semi-solid. Um, if not completely solid, so I just, I just go with it for that. So, that speeds things up tremendously. I mean, not having to do one X at a time. Uh, that, I'm using all of the called for silks with the exception of one, which is the primary reason that that thing isn't done yet, because I went through this large drama. Uh, but, when I finish it, I'll talk more, because I always do. <laughs> okay, next. Oh, okay. I know what this is. This is a project that I have been wanting to pull out recently. Oh, but I don't think I'm going to get to it until September, maybe. Okay. Um, so that is coming from this gorgeous book. Um, and the one that I am referring to is the November Quilt. Quilts for All Seasons by Paula Vaughn. Um, it's that autumnal one with the pumpkins and the maple leaf watermelon quilt. God, I'm obsessed. Oh, I shouldn't flip through this book because it makes me want to stitch all of the things. Oh, dangerous. Okay, there. There's the big one. There's the big version of it. Um, I am nowhere near, nowhere even close on this one. Um, but anyway, so, uh, this linen is a 32 count Belfast in cream by Zweigart. And that's what I've got done. Not a whole lot. I love Paula Von patterns. Uh, I wish that I didn't have that in the book though, because... It's color charted and um, I can't highlight over it. I guess I could, but I won't. Anyway, so I've got um, primarily the watermelon border done, at least the, the red fleshy part, um, and then a little bit of the green. And then I started work on the inside, which is like all of the quarter stitches, which I love. So yeah, that's that. This one, I really, I'm, I'm craving some time on this one. So hopefully I can get to that in September, but we'll see. Um, 
after my finish on Saturday night. I wanted to pull this out to work on for these last two days, but I was just like, two days is not going to be enough to satisfy this hunger for this project. So there's that. Okay, what have we got next? What are you? Oh, I haven't worked on this since I started it. <laughs> That's also going to be a theme here. Just a heads up. All right. So this is the Needleworker by Little House Needleworks. Gorgeous. And I am stitching this on, I think I got 32 count. Do I still have my tag? I do. Yes, 32 count uh, Vintage Country Mocha Belfast by Zweiger. This is a printed fabric that is well loved by all. Um, and just gorgeous for this. I'm stitching this using the called for and provided colors. Uh, they are all crescent colors, classic color works. And yeah, I need to get back to this. It stitches up so fast. I think I did this in like three, maybe four days tops. And uh, I, I need more of it in my life. And because this design isn't very tall, I still have half a piece to, to play with. I forget how gorgeous this fabric is. Yeah, that's, that's good. I might need to get some more of that. Maybe not two yards worth, but uh, some more of that. Okay. Aw, love this. It's like a surprise for all of us, you guys. I pull one out. I don't know what it is until it comes out. It's great. Uh, this little beauty. This one has an updated abbreviated goal um, of just the bottom half. This is my Rose Fairy by Joan Elliott. And fairy door needle winder up there. Oh, it's getting precarious. All right, this is a 28 count Lugana and Confetti by Picture This Plus. And I got some good time on this in the month of July for Joan Elliott July. And I feel really good about what, uh, what I accomplished in those six days. Um, I started on some of the skin. I finished the skirt. Oh, it's so pretty. So pretty. Another really great yellow. Uh, I find myself like needing a yellow fabric, so that's why I'm pointing that out. But this one has some pinks and blues and purples kind of modeled into it. This is the Lugana, so um, it dyes up a lot lighter than a linen would. But anyway, absolutely gorgeous. Need to get back to this one. Want to. Not sure when. Um, I might have just mentioned that my new goal is, is the bottom half. Okay. Next. Also a new abbreviated goal on this one. Okay. This is my Opus 2. Also known as Maggie. And Needleminder is a gorgeous green agate slice there. My new abbreviated goal is the Alphabet and the Quaker Jellyfish Rowboats border, aka that top border there. Um, I just call it that. You guys know why if you watched the video by the same name. Anyway, so that's, that's my new year-end goal uh, with this project, and I really hope to finish it next year. I might have to make this my own stitch along next year and try to do a motif a month or something like that. I don't know. This is long overdue to be done. Um, yeah, that, that needs that needs some attention. Okay, so this is on a 28 count antique white cashel linen by Zweigart. And I'm stitching this using DMC 924. So it's like a deep, dark, bluey green color that always looks very green on camera. Um, yeah, it looks pretty green. Part of that has to do with the antique white nature of the fabric. Part of that is just this color. It's bluey green. So I've got a hodgepodge of things going on here. I started in the center. Then I did 
with that ginormous motif than I did this one down here at the bottom with all of those Quaker flowers. Then I did this one here, which was a blast, even though I had to rip it out a couple times. Um, I was actually working on this the weekend that Danny and I got engaged. So that's kind of, there's even more memories sewn into this. And then most recently I worked up and over and up some more. Um, so a considerable amount left to do to meet my goal for the end of the year, but not unobtainable. Not unobtainable. Okay. Three more here in this segment. This one, my year-end goal is still to finish it, but I don't know how that's going to happen. If I'm honest. Okay. This is Electra by Nora Corbett. This is my new favorite of the Bewitching Pixie series. I already have Gigi finished. I would like to say that I'm going to do them all. The reality of the situation is that I might pick three or four total to do. Um, this is on the Called for Linen, which is 32 Count Milk Chocolate by Witch Alt. This thing is stiff, um, but it's all right. I'm dealing with it. Um, I replaced the black with anchor black so that we get really, really solid black coverage there. And her wing is charted in green. I am undecided at this point. I'm either going to skip the wing entirely or I recharted it to be maroon so that this little witchy girl here can be maroon and orange because there's no such thing as too much. So yeah, love that. This one, these Bewitching Pixies work up surprisingly fast. Uh, once I put some dedicated time, I think I've worked on this maybe four days total. So yeah, shouldn't be, shouldn't be too hard to finish up this year, <laughs> along with, you know, everything else. Okay, up next, the bane of my existence. It's really not. That's more dramatic than it needs to be, but this is a project that I will write it. I am ready to be done just to say it's done. And I feel bad about that because I was so excited about this at the beginning. But anyway, Fantasy Sal, designed by Doreen Jones, put together by Lakeside Needlecraft. Uh, Hogwarts Crest here, upside down, but whatever. Needle Miter, because this is kind of a Harry Potter sampler. Um, and my fabric is a 32 count Belfast in Heroic by Picture This Plus, um, which has worked out to be really more of a 34, 35 count. Uh, yeah. So that's where I'm at currently. I decided to make this project even harder on myself because I stitched everything that has skin one over one. I will never understand me. Anyway, um, so I still have the July block to finish out and then so much border. But it'll be nice to have it finished and who knows, maybe that will go in eventual kiddo's bedroom. So there's that. Of all of my projects, that's the only one that I think I would consider that I'm not excited about. That's kind of sad. Okay, next we have our first project where I don't have a copy, so I will insert a picture. This is Shades of Wine by Northern Expressions Needlework. And I am stitching it on 40 count alabaster Newcastle linen, uh, one over one with the called for dinky dyes. And that's where I'm at. Ain't that cute? So so much progress. So much. Yeah. Um, so I have a long way to go on this one. But my year-end goal is this first corner. So I think I talked about that before. But that is, that is my year-end goal for this project. Um, I do love this. And I love getting to work with the silks. I just don't ever make it a priority. And I need to do that. Um, it's coming up here in the rotation where it's going to get five or six good days, but not until, I think, October. So. 
that is that. Is that it for wine and whips? Or not wine and whips. Year of whips. That's it for year of whips. So I'm going to relocate the piles and then come back with, um, let's do Mirabilia's next. Okay. Next, we're going to talk Mirabilia's and then Norcorbett's directly after. Um, so I just checked uh, to make sure that I have my inf information correct. I have 10 Mirabilia's on the go um, and three Nora Corbett's, but I just showed you one um, Electra. So let's, let's get her going. All right, first is the one that is most coveted by all. Well, by many, not all. And that is Seaside Kingdom. That gorgeousness. Sorry for the glare. This one's got a shiny cover, fi cover picture. So yeah, there's that. Seaside Kingdom, uh, Needleminders, Sandcastle, and a Sand Dollar. And this is on 32 Count Belfast in Beach Walk by Under the Sea Fabrics. And I got a um, ink blot test. <laughs> Most of these were started during Mania 17, so that's part of the reason why there's um, so little to be seen, but nonetheless. So I got a little bit of a start, worked on a few colors. I started from the top to work my way down. That has kind of become my new uh, method. I measure a whole bunch of times and then I start from the top if I can because I hate working upwards. Persephone taught me I really hate working upwards. Okay. Up next is an oldie but a goodie that hasn't seen the light of day for a while. This was temporarily placed in the UFO pile because the chart is very difficult. Um, this chart is, um, it's very large and there's no overlap. And with this one, I started in the center because that was my usual way to start a mirror. Um, and the center happens to sit right on a page break, on the page break. And so it was a, just a giant pain in the butt to have to flip this humongous piece of paper. On top of the fact that the way that it's oriented, it's, it's just difficult to use. So Danny actually took this to work. Uh, they have a, a printer that handles construction plans, so very large pieces of paper, and he printed me off. Um, a couple copies so that I can look at two pages at once, which will ultimately save me so much. So anyway, Snow Queen. This was one of my favorite, favorite releases from, I think it was last year. And I don't have anything in there. Um, but yeah, just absolute one of my favorites. Um, this is on a 32 count Belfast in... Opalescent Belfast in Darkness Falls by Under the Sea Fabrics. And it's just stunning. Yeah, ain't that, ain't that something. Super sparkly. Can you see all that sparkle? Oh, this is so good. And so that's what I got done for my start before I put it in the UFO pile temporarily. I pulled it back out because everything except your whips pretty much is a UFO these days. Um, so it went back in, in the hoard. Oh gosh, I love this. I can't wait to get back to this um, and finally be able to work on it for more than a minute and a half before I have to quit. This is a fat half of fabric because of the way that it had to be oriented. Um, and um, I cut off a piece of it so that it would fit on my large Millennium Bars because it wouldn't originally. 36 inches wide. It's not going to fit. So I cut it down and... Yeah. Okay. Enough of showing that almost nothing of a start. Gorgeousness. Oh, <laughs> I love that fabric. Love it. Okay. What else have we got here? Another Mania 17 start. This is Portrait of Veronica. Veronica, right? Yes. 
I always want to call her Victoria. Um, <laughs> and uh, Lady Liberty Needle Miter there because of the mint colorway, um, which I am stitching this on 32 Count Belfast in Mint by Picture This Plus. And I did replace the black with anchor black on this because that's what I'm inclined to do. Oh, this is upside down, that's right. Um, I'm inclined to replace the black if there's a lot of black featured in a project. And this one calls for three skeins, so anchor black it is. And that's my start. Again, it's at the top. This is in her hair bow area. It doesn't look like anything other than an ink blot because that's what happens with mania. Especially on Katie's birthday, which is when I started this. So there's that. This fabric. Oh, I love this color. If I had been somebody who ordered in the Picture This Plus sale, because fun fact, I didn't for the third year in a row, um, I would have got a lot of this because I love that. Mint is one of my colors these days. Okay, up next. Not a mania start and not an ink blot test. And this one, the memory keeper string thing is falling apart. Probably need to just take that off at some other time. Okay. This is the Raven Queen. This is my oldest current Mirabilia. Um, and it's going to be my first one that I focus on next year. Raven Queen, Gothic Lady. And this is on a 32 count Belfast in Haunted by Picture This Plus. I got this fabric from Stony Creek and so that's why the ends are all jacked up. Um, but that's okay, making it work. Haunted for Raven Queen, yeah. AKA Edgar Allan Poe. This is also an anchor black um, because yeah, that's a lot of black. And I just wanted the, the good, good solid coverage there. Yeah, love this one. I'm gonna need to get back to her because I wanna finish her next year. Next year. Okay. Okay. Next, another out of print, becoming a little bit hard to find, just a little bit. Okay, this is Queen Mermaid. Yeah, she's gorgeous. I just saw for the first time, somebody did a conversion of this where they chopped off her bottom half and made her a standing person and she is setting instead of this weird clutch purse thing um she's setting a crown on like the head of assumably like presumably her daughter or something because this um another character is in this conversion um and she's in like a like a wedding gown kind of style oh my gosh this was one of the coolest conversions I've ever seen of this because she does look like she's reaching to set something down. I absolutely love that. Anyway, I'm stitching her as Charted, um, as Mermaid, and um, Mermaid Needle Miter here that I got from Leslie's stash sale. Hello, Mermaid. Leslie, der. Um, and this is also on Under the Sea Fabrics because der. Uh, this is 32 Count Belfast in As You Wish. And this is another one that's going to be a focus next year because this was not a Mania 17 start. This was a Mania 16 start, actually. And, yeah, just love that. Started in the middle, started working my way down. Um, my next task when I pull this back out again is to finish the tail because the tail has a lot of very solid big block stitching, which I don't love. Um, so I'm going to try to knock that out and then get started on her skin that I'm going to do one over one because I'm a glutton for punishment. Yeah, another gorgeous, gorgeous fabric from Leslie. She's so talented. Oh, this, one. this one is my heart.
this is Stargazer, um, which I am doing a color conversion of to be um, a Virginia Tech remembrance piece. I nicknamed her Remy. Yeah, this is, this is a lot of fun. Uh, this is on 32 Count Belfast in Florin by Chromatic Alchemy. And when I started on this in April, I didn't get a whole lot done. But um, you can see things. It's her hair and the ribbon coming from her hair, which I converted to a black ribbon. Um, I converted her hair to be a dirty blonde because that's why. <laughs> Uh, and then I started work on her shoulder. Her overcoat is in maroons. Her, um, her, the front of her dress is going to be, I believe, in oranges. And the skirts of her dress are in stone colored. Uh, to represent Virginia Tech Hokie Stone and um, just everything that's important to me with this piece. So there is that. Absolutely love this. This fabric... That's, oh, it still smells good. Sam, how'd you do that? Um, it's showing up brown in the, in the camera. Um, it is brown, but it has like a reddish sort of tone to it. I know the brown has a reddish tone to it, but it's a little bit more red than it's showing on camera. Okay, up next, we have my first Mirabilia start for... Mania 17. This one, I saw on Instagram that Simon Stitches, is it Simon? I believe so. Uh, just got this chart and he said that he was a little bit underwhelmed when it arrived just because when you see it up close it looks a little bit different than when you see it like on your computer screen. And I will admit that I felt the exact same way. I was a little underwhelmed by this. This is the Garden Muses. And uh, the Giving Tree book needleminder up here. But I gotta tell you, and I'm barely into it, so I can't say that this is like, I can't say this with any real confidence, but I do think that this is going to stitch up way more beautifully than it looks in that cover. This project is not well loved. It's not one that's stitched a whole lot because it's old. Um, but I think that it's gonna be really gorgeous. So this is on 32 Count Belfast in Evergreen by Under the Sea Fabrics. And it's showing up very blue. It's a greeny blue that I would equate to like a bright, um, a dark, bright turquoise and I know that, that sounds contradictory but that's kind of how I feel about it. So I got an ink blot start for Mania and um yeah I mean I don't have I don't have a whole lot done so I can't necessarily say that with any confidence that I think it's more gorgeous stitched up than it is in that picture but I do kind of think that already and maybe that's because I'm in love with this fabric and maybe that's because I'm in love with the idea of not everybody's stitching it, but um, I'm going to give it some love and we'll see how it goes. Yeah, that's gorgeous. Okay, oh, here's another one that I think I'm in love with partially because uh, nobody else is stitching it. And Partially because of the fabric. I forgot. I forgot how much I love this fabric. Oh, yeah. Okay. So, this is uh, Garden Beauty. She's another old one. Originally from... 2005. So, not that old. About 12 years old. Uh, Groot needle minder here. Because Garden... This one I think would lend itself really well to color conversions um, and a part of me is tempted to stitch it again to make it much more gothic um, because that dress just lends itself to be gothic and these flowers in her arm could be dead. I just, I get that, that sense by looking at this. 
I wondered if it mentioned anything about it being a little bit gothic romantic. Anyway, this fabric is hand dyed fabrics by Stephanie in Caridwen, uh, 32 count Belfast. I got none of a start on this. I, w I must have been exhausted or something was going on, but I got nothing done on this. But I don't care because I'm already in love with it. Those 30 stitches are my favorite 30 stitches on this whole piece of fabric. <laughs> Anyway, is this fabric not just stunning? Pinks and greens, it's so beautiful. And it's kind of got, you know, that might be, I gotta tell you guys, I have been thinking, and this is totally off topic, but um, I have been thinking about fabric for Hortus Venenum by Chatelaine. This might be really good for that. If it was a little bit quieter, if it was a little bit more subtle, that might look really good for a, uh, a poison garden. Yeah, maybe. Anyway, love, 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 love it. That one I need to get back to ASAP Rocky. Okay, <sighs> another well-loved one. It's funny, I, okay, so I've talked about how I'm in an effort to comment on every video that I watch. Sometimes I want to watch Flosstube and not comment, so I watch my own videos. <laughs> um, and most recently I was watching my early 2016 videos, and early 2016 I said, no new starts, I'm not starting anything, I had my new year new start and that was it. And then we got to March, and I was like, I'm going to start something new, and I'm only going to work on that one thing all month. I don't know who this person was. She was possessed. Anyway, uh, that project was the Queen Mermaid, or Queen Mermaid, Bluebeard's Princess by Mirabella. No. Bluebeard's Princess Mirabella by Mirabilia, as these all are. Sorry about all of that confusing jibber-jabber. Um, I ended up failing miserably at my mostly monogamous march, but I did focus on this, and then I've worked on it since then. This is on 32 Count Belfast in NYX by Under the Sea Fabrics, and here's where I'm at currently. I have the hardest part of her skin absolutely done, uh, and the hardest part of her skin is this long stretch of 50 stitches that I did one over one, which is... 200 stitches for one line, but that's done now. So now the rest will be easy, easy-ish. Um, and so yeah, her hair, so gorgeous. I remember feeling this way, and since I just watched the videos, like I, I, I was refreshed by this feeling. But I was concerned about her hair because it looked more gray, and I thought that it was going to be more vibrant purple. Um, but I feel so much better about it now that I have the green tones of her hair done. Yeah, that's, yeah, gorgeous. Um, I have talked an awful lot this year about single stitch borders. This one, I ripped out the single stitch border and I'm replacing with a single herringbone border, which you can kind of see there. Yeah, so there's that. This is another one that's going to get plenty of attention next year for hopefully a, a finish that won't take too long once I get that skin done. But we'll see. Alright, I think we're on to the last Mirabilia. So, um, and the last Mirabilia is actually my most recent Mirabilia start. And this one I think I replaced with Anchor Black too. Okay, so we have Aphrodite, Mermaid, aka, oh my god, that's a lot of skin, Seahorse Needle Minder here, tall and skinny for tall and skinny. And this is on 32 Count Belfast in Keone by Under the Sea Fabrics, another mermaid on Leslie's Fabrics, make sure I got this turned around the right way. 
started at the top in that gorgeous hair of hers with some of those blues and dark greens. And this is what the fabric looks like all together. It's a pretty accurate representation. It's like a grays and blues and purple, like a lavender purple. Very gorgeous. Um, of my Mirabilia's that I currently have going, I will admit that I am least excited about this one. But part of that has to do with the fact that I was so done with starts by the time I started this one. Um, this was my last Mania 17 start. And I was, like, done starting. But I started it, and it's got a few stitches in it. And it can wait, which is great. It's great. It will wait. Okay, so then next, let's talk Nora Corbett. Um, so these are the smaller Mirabilia designs. And this one is my Little Miss Mardi Gras. And I started this in Mania 16, and I haven't worked on her since, uh, which I need to I need to fix that. Um, so this is the Berry Collector. And I call her Little Miss Mardi Gras because she just, she gives me that vibe. The mask, the colors... And this I'm stitching on 32 Count Belfast from Under the Sea Fabrics in Autumn. It's this gorgeous neutral that she released last year um, that I thought would be really great background for these. And so for Mania last year, I got a start on her skirt. And I got a pretty good chunk done there in one day. That's not bad. Considering I was in pre-wedding mode. Yeah, not bad. Um, and this, I had a full fat quarter of, but I cut it in half because I'm going to do the other, um, I'm going to do another in this series, and I cannot, rem for the life of me, remember. The Leaf Collector, that's right, um, on that same fabric. So they'll be matchy-matchy. Okay, last in this segment, we have one that um, I will insert a preview of. This is from the Just Cross Stitch April 2016 issue. It is Queen Anne's Lace, which I am um, I am dubbing a, a drag queen for reasons I have already talked about. This project and I have not gotten along very well in its infancy. This is uh, 28 Count Cashel in Crystal Wren by Picture This Plus. So it sparkles. And the reason that this project and I don't get along very well is that I had a lot more done and I had to rip it all out because I got off on the skin. And when I got off on the skin, I decided to rip out the two over two bits because it's a hell of a lot easier to rip out two over two than it is one over one on linen. So um, I had a considerable amount done in the greens of her skirt. It wasn't like a lot. It was still, you know, it was still small enough to where I could justify ripping it out rather than starting over. But it was a lot. So anyway, so there's that. Absolutely none of this makes any sense. It will when I pull it back out, which will be at some point some other time. All right, so that's it for the Mirabilia section. Next, we're going to do the Hades. Okay, heaven and earth design time. I have six to show you here. I have a total of seven currently on the go. Uh, one of which I already showed you, which is Faces of Fairy 201. So, let's start with you. Ugh, this one. Love this one. Well, that's where that one got to. <laughs> All right, I've been on. I've been looking for one of my clay elephant needle miners, and I couldn't find it. It's on this project. This is Alice in a Dolly Dream artwork by Jasmine Beckett Griffith. <sighs> I love this. This was a Mania 17 start, um, and the elephant for the uh, swans reflecting elephants, the death head moth for that spiel that I gave you guys about the death head moth and then watched Emily's video where she talked about her love of the death head moth and I felt really stupid. Anyway, um, and then this, um, 
minder from No Native Needle Minders that talks that shows that painting that's really popular in all of Salvador Dali's um, in his body of work. It's the most popular of his designs of his paintings, for which I can't ever think of the name, so I just call it Melting Time. Anyway, so there's that Mania Seventeen Star. This is on 25 count Lugana uh, Easy Count by Zweigart. I got the smallest of itty bitty little starts. I'm not even sure which way this goes. You'd think I know considering it's my stitching method, but whatever. Side note, I really hope that the new, um, the new challenge is my stitching method. I think that'd be really great. <laughs> Anyway, so I got 600 stitches done, and I have so much, left. so much left. Yeah, I don't know when this is coming back out, um, but I'm hoping to fit her into a whole bunch of the challenges for the uh, full coverage 2018 that Anne has put together or is putting together. Um, I'm hoping that I can make that work. If not, then I'll figure something out um, because I need to make some good progress on this. Oh, I love it. I'm gonna say that about all of these just so you know because I am in such a full coverage mode right now. I'm just, I'm digging it. Okay, next is not my oldest. I thought it was my oldest. Oh, but this is a favorite. And this will come out if I decide to do the hate challenge. We'll see what the details of that are. I think I can do this for that. Okay. Um, this is... April by Anna Dittman. Which I started... For, I started in April of last year, and uh, I started it for the Cross Country Hade Challenge. And this is on 25 count Antique White Lugana, one over one full cross, and I have three pages done. Oh, guys. Guys. I need to get back to this. Oh gosh, do you see those column lines? Yeah, that's a product of this page here. That page caused that very severely. Oh, I love this. So, yeah. Um, this is my next page focus after faces is done. Um, and I just, I can't get over how much I'm in love with this. I love these blues. These blues down here, so happy. Oh, hey, perfect. Okay, so I think that depending on the challenge, I will be able to use this page three uh, for the challenge because I didn't feather into the page. Um, and I missed a stitch. <laughs> I just found a stitch that's not in there. All right, well, I'll have to put that in. That's crazy. I just found one stitch in this sea of stitches. Anyway, love her. Um, she will not take up this whole piece of fabric. Um, I'll probably be able to get a mini on the bottom here if I ever use non-gridded, non-pre-gridded Lugana ever again for, for a hate which I might not. I might be spoiled. Spoiled rotten. All right, I'm gonna fold this one up. Yeah, um, I knew that this was gonna be my next hate focus after seeing uh, Flissy Fish's progress on her Elsa, um, but this just reaffirms that this is my next focus. My thinking is that when I finish faces, then I'm going to do a page for on Bridge Where She Waits, uh, which I haven't started yet, um, and then go back and 
spend the rest of my life on a book. <sighs> because... Because that's why. Because she's just gorgeous. Okay. Uh, here's my mo most recent. Okay, this is Avarice by Marcia Dalek. And uh, this I have talked to you guys about is my um, my anniversary, my wedding piece. Uh, I started this on my wedding anniversary this year uh, because Danny bought this chart for me for a dating anniversary a few years ago, as well as all of the threads. And um, so that's why there's the Redskins Needle Minder and the Bulldog and a heart. Um, so yeah. She's going to get some attention. This is actually, um, she is actually a dark-skinned woman uh, wearing um, a very bright, beautiful gold yellow dress. Uh, it's not a uh, black and white picture. So yeah, this is Avarice, and I'm greedy for some time with her, and I have no idea where to put this. Stay. Okay, this is also on 25 Count Easy Count by Zweigart. I worked on this for two days because... The day that I started it was our anniversary and we, we had things to do, um, but I did get 600 stitches done to get it going to represent uh, he and I being together for six years. So that's what I got done, just that top little happy little corner. And um, yeah, I will be happy to work on this some more. It, that first corner, that first block was like more confetti than I have had in, in like at all in April, in three pages of April. But it's it's toned down considerably since that first block. And I talked to you guys about um, at our anniversary, I'm going to work on the number of blocks that represent the number of years that we've been together. So this year I did six. My goal is to do the number of pages as um, as it pertains to the number of years we've been married. So at some point this year, or in the beginning of next year, I need to get the first page done on this because we've been married for a year. Okay, next is my oldest. And it's rather sad <laughs> um, because this, Okay, so when I started this project, the ever gorgeous and wonderful Mrs. Milky Bar Kid was still uh, doing her, her floss tube videos. And she has since retired from floss tube and she's taken a step back. She's doing her own thing these days. Totally fine. Amanda had said something about Heaven and Earth Designs and she said that if she likes artwork, she has had a mind shift to where she just needs to go buy the artwork or print of the artwork. Um, spending years and years with a project is, um, it's not where her mind is focused. And that resonated with me and I started taking a much harder look at my projects at that point. Things have changed again, obviously, but um, at that time I was looking at things much more critically. Um, and then this artwork was charted by Heaven Earth Designs and I fell head over heels in love with this piece and I decided that it's ginormous. It's my largest hate currently um, and I was okay with, with stitching it because I wanted to live in this artwork and if I could become a resident of this artwork for five years or however long it's going to take me to do it, then great because I want to spend some more time with this piece. Um, and so I started it in March of 2015. This is In This Moment by Jeremiah Kettner and I have not been a very good resident of this piece. Um, I have decided 
uh, to rename this piece uh, McKenna for rather obvious reasons. Um, and if you don't know the reasons, then you need to join Instagram and follow Stitching in Sequence, and then you will understand why. Um, so this is McKenna. I'm pretty sure that if you've got something sparkly or something half naked, you should probably name it McKenna. Um, so yeah, so there's that. Um, and this is on 25 Count Magana. This is my only one that's not antique white. I believe it's cream. I think I got cream. Um, and what I have done is an embarrassing one page. Just one. And then like 150 stitches into the next page. Yeah, in two years, two and a half years now, I've done one page. And that is um, what I would consider my um, stitching shame. I should not be... I should be spending more time on this. Because, like I said, I wanted to live in it and... Uh, at one point I nicknamed this project my insanity because it is 525 stitches square. Uh, for those doing the math at home, it's roughly 277,000 stitches. Yeah, pretty big. Pretty big. Oh gosh, I love this. I love, yeah, I'm not even going to go on and on because I could, but I won't love this. Um, somebody said to me recently, um, so are you going to restart in this moment on easy count fabric and like because of what I've got done here 7,000 of 270,000 uh, yeah I guess I could but I'm not gonna um, because I'm just not going to this one is going to stay on this fabric and I'll just grit it it'll be fine so we'll see we'll see when this one comes out this is another one that I'm looking forward to for the um, for the full coverage challenges because um, it will inspire me to pull this out. I hope. I hope. I hope. Okay, two more, and these two are some some crowd favorites. Uh, the first is booty. This, oh, this one. Okay, uh, this one I haven't worked on since December of last year. Uh, this is Mini Pirate by Sabine Rich. Um, I got this as a reward as my pirate booty for finishing Mini Pearl. And um, I call her booty because she's a pirate and she's um, she's got curves. So there's that. Love this. 25 count, one over one. I have the first page done. And that first page just, <laughs> you gotta love minis uh, because I got a whole bunch of features. Sarah, does this make you want to pull out your pirate? Seeing it makes me want to work on her. Look at her face. There's face and you can see earring and that gorgeous hat. I love this. Oh. I love this. I miss it. I have 11 pages left, and the bottom three pages are less than half. I need to work on this. <laughs> I miss this project. Oh, she's so gorgeous. Um, so yeah, this has got to happen, um, <laughs> as they all do. Seriously. It's so pretty. Um, Sarah Stitches, um, Tipsy Stitcher. I forgot her old Instagram name is Sarah Stitches because that came up in my in my watching of my older videos. Um, Tipsy Stitcher as well as Tracy P. They are both working on the full size versions. And somebody on my Instagram, and forgive me, I don't remember. Uh, just finished the full size. Did you finish the full size or was it the mini? I can't remember. It was a while ago. Anyway, um, yeah, that, that's a gorgeous project. So many colors. And then there's this project. 
This is my last Heaven and Earth design currently. And um, this one inspired... Uh, she has done a video for Flosstube before, but she is most prolific on Instagram. It is Andrea um, All Tangled in Threads, and the, the threads ends in, in a Z. This inspired her to start a Jeremiah Kettner. Uh, Jeremiah Kettner is a genius, and I wish that more of his artwork was charted by hate. Anyway, this is Personal Sunshine. Um, I replaced the black with Anchor Black. And uh, 25 Count Lagana 1 over 1. This is not pre-graded fabric. I finally got the per first page done this year. And it's upside down. Oh, no, it's sideways. That's right. Um, yeah, can you guys see why I chose Anchor Black? <laughs> that page is like 99% black. And the coverage looks pretty good. Now, up close, it's, um, it's definitely... Um, it's not 100% perfect, but by and large, it's pretty, it's pretty great. Oh, gosh, I love this. <laughs> I really do. I love them all so very much. There is not enough time in the day. I love all of these so much that it makes me love faces a little bit less. And I just crested the 50% mark on that project yesterday. And, uh, yeah. I want to work on everything else, uh, all my other hits. It will be gorgeous when it's done, don't get me wrong, and I love working on it. Um, but it's because it's only been my only Heaven and Earth design focus for months now. Um, or not months, I guess a couple months. Um, I really, really miss some of these other ones. <sighs> Let's sigh. Okay, anyway, um, so that is it for the Hades and the Mirrors and the Noras. So let's get on to everything else. Those keeping track at home, we are at 33 projects shown so far. So we're at almost halfway. <laughs> yeah. I hope some of you paused and went to go get something to eat, especially you, Orietta. I'm not kidding. Go eat something. Okay. Um, but the good news is I have figured out a method for where to put things um, from here. Except for my phone. That needs to be upside down. Okay, so the rest is alphabetical by design name, and um, yeah, so everything else was just kind of grab and go, but this is, um, this is alphabetical. And the first thing we have here is, um, I will insert a preview of what this design will look like finished in approximately 25 years. Um, and this is the Piacione Recamo 20 year celebration style from 2013 into 2014. Um, this is on a 32 count Belfast in Ariel by Picture This Plus. It is so soft, crazy soft, like, um, yeah, hard, hard to understand why the, the fabric is so different. Um, and it's a fat half, and it's ginormous, and I am, like I said, 25 years, probably a fair estimate, of when this will be done and framed never. So I'm just going to slowly scan up here. This is another project that, like, doesn't excite me. It doesn't call to me, other than the mass amounts left to do. Um, so I have the first block done, and most of the second block. There's still some some work to be done in that second block. And then I think there's like ten more. But I have the border done, and it all matches up, so at least there's that. So long as I didn't get, you know, one stitch off. Yeah, this is... Um, this is never going to be done, but that's okay. That's okay. Um, so yeah, so there's that. 20 years celebration. Poor Laura. Laura is never going to do another mystery style ever again. She hasn't said that, but 
I have a feeling that she's never going to do another one because uh, this last one went so horribly. I guess a whole bunch of people put it out there on the internet and made it available. And so Laura was really miffed by it and um, I feel really bad. <sighs> anyway, um, moving on from sad topics, let's talk about another project that's also on Ariel. And this is a project that I started almost a year ago, if not very close to a year ago. This is Country Cottage Nail Works Afternoon in New York. And I love this. Uh, this is using all of the called for threads, including um, a mix of Classic Color Works sampler threads by Gast and Weeks Dye Works. And that was the back. Dista front. And that is the Empire State Building largely in progress. I thought I had the Empire State Building finished, but I don't. Um, I started this for the mm, Crazy 7. Yeah, this one won't take too long once I get to it. Um, this is also on 32 Count Belfast and Ariel by Picture This Plus. Um, the linen changed between these two pieces of fabric because you can even see that this one is much lighter. This one is darker and it's not as soft. It's not butter. Okay, up next we have, where are you? Oh, you're from a book. Okay, so this project is coming from the Carousel Horses in Cross Stitch. Sorry about my ring. Uh, Carousel Horses in Cross Stitch. This is by Donna Cooler. And uh, this was started because Blimey Cat made me. <laughs> yes, I'm straight up blaming you, Brittany. Um, and I started with an Enchanted January because Brittany made me, and that's her birth month. That's my story, and I'm sticking to it. Okay. And this was a Mania 17 start, and this was a difficult Mania 17 start because a lot of this calls for critic, and I know I say that wrong, but I will never say it right. Um, it calls for a ton of Krennic, and I don't know if it's blending filament or number four braid. Um, but anyway, so this is on uh, 28 count antique white cashel by Zweigart, I think. Unless it's 32, but I do think that this is 28. Anyway, so I got a very simple, very meager start, as you do for Mania. And um, most of that progress will have to be, um, most of the progress is going to be slow until I get those critics because um, there's a lot, a lot of blends. And I've got fuzzy. So there's that. Okay, next is my Katie Sampler. Katie the Stash Queen, AKA hashtag not a heart, AKA around the world in 80 stitches by Happy Own Creations. And I don't think that I have a preview of what this will look like finished because I don't think one exists. But this is part one of 24. Yes. Um, and this is on a gorgeous, gorgeous soft fabric. Um, this is Friendship Green by Hand Dyed Fabrics by Stephanie. And so what I started with was a heart. And that's all I got done. Um, so this project is my Rachi sampler because all of the threads that I chose for it are very uh, suggestive. And I did that on purpose because of Katie and I's inside joke about it being not a heart. And uh, needle miner there, also not a heart. Not scissors either. Okay. Um, I don't know when I'm going to get back to that. I don't know when I'm going to get back to any of this. I should stop saying that. Next is a project that, um, whose birthday is tomorrow. 
which I forgot about. Oh, and apparently I got this right after the fact. This. So this is August by the Cricut Collection. The next in my monthly series, and I started it in the center. There. And this is the, the thread that I need for the letters. That's probably why I have almost nothing done in this, because I didn't have this thread at the time. Um, and this is uh, Thread Gatherer Silk and Color Slate Blue, SNC number 109. Uh, no telling if this is still being produced. But it's gorgeous. And this I am stitching on 32 count pearl gray Belfast linen by Wichelt. No, Swagger. And so, as I said, got a barely a start on the lobster. Lobster not even close to finished. Yeah. Very, very weak start on that. But that's how it goes. Um, one day progress almost a year ago. A year ago tomorrow. Yeah, those monthlies. I need to get back on back on track with those. Probably next year. Um, I might be doing my own cells rather than any of the prescribed mystery cells, but we'll see. I had no idea what that was. We're going to find out together. This one doesn't have... Oh, I know what this is. Okay. I need this other book. That's why it didn't have the chart in it, because the chart is from a book. And it's this one. Polyvon's Quilts for All Seasons. And it's this one. Tilt it the right way. That's the August quilt. This was the first that I started after I got this book. And that's what it will look like finished. This is a very, very white quilt. I haven't worked on this in a very, very long time. Uh, this is on 32 Count Belfast in Antique White Nope Cream by Zweigart. And I wasted a whole bunch of fabric with this one. <laughs> the other ones I think I was cognizant of the fact that I could get two on one piece of fabric. Such is not the case here. Anyway. Um, so this, I've got some pretty good progress. I mean, you can see things on this. Those windows are stitched with, um, are they one strand? Yes, they are one strand. So Polyvon varies the weights. Um, you use some one strand or uh, some two strands, only half cross, uh, just to give dimension. That's kind of funny because Dimensions does that also. Anyway, um, yeah, love this. I need to get back to this one. Like I said, I'm feeling some Polyvon. Lisa, that might be your fault. <laughs> I'm just, I'm really in the mood for, for some of that. You guys can see my taste in stitching. Like, it is bonkers. It is all over the place. So I'm, like, craving some Heaven and Earth Designs dark fantasy and some Mirabilia's ridiculously overdressed beautiful ladies and then Polyvon's Quilts for All Seasons, which is very countrified. Um, I don't know. I am... Um, um, what can I say? I broke a nail. That's what I can say. Um, I have a lot of different personalities. Okay. <laughs> now that we've got that admitted, um, this is the Chatelaine. This is Autumn Fairy, so a preview here of what this will look like finished because I don't have a printout of this. And this, I believe it's 32, it's probably 32 count. Um, this is Mellow by Picture This Plus. And I gotta tell you, on camera, it looks like Mellow. And in person, it looks like a Mesa. That's kind of strange. Anyway. Uh, my not buying in the Picture This Plus Christmas in July sale, I did an awful lot of window shopping. So, anyway. Um, so this is where I'm at with this. I have most of part one done here at the top. Just that wild mix of colors. But it will all come together. 
I know that it does. And so, yeah, I will continue to work on this. I swore to myself that I would never stitch a chatelaine on hand-dyed fabrics because it shrinks the fabric and so the beads may not sit right. And for Hortus Fenenum, I'm going to do that on a, if I do it on hand-dyed, I'm going to do it on a 28 count because then it will be okay and the beads will fit fine. Um, but I'm hoping that the beads are going to be okay on this because, because yeah, Ugh, so gorgeous, so gorgeous. I've got my projects down here underneath the table. And so I put one away and I see what's next. I'm like, hmm. okay, here's a favorite. And this is another one that's kind of calling to me right now. It might be Kim's fault. Kim, who just finished her Brave? Yes, Brave. This is Beauty and the Beast. And appropriately, a gigantic rose needle miter <laughs> to go with my gigantic rose cross stitch pattern. This is by Donna Stitch. And this is on a 32 count Belfast in cream by Zweigart. And this was a Mania 16 start, which I have worked on several times since then. Sad, sad, sad amount of progress. Sometimes I'm not in the mood for big blocks of color and Dona Stitch is notorious for big old blocks of color. So I have to be in the right mindset or I have to want to stitch a whole lot at once, um, which is usually the case, but if I'm participating in a challenge uh, where I need to get numbers real fast, then this is, um, this is a good one. Love that. Uh, Dona Stitch is back. Um, she recently released Snow White, which I might have to do because my grandma's favorite was Snow White. Okay, up next is my other Chatelaine that's currently on the go. Um, it's also not a traditional mandala design. This is Bold Band Sampler number three. Preview here of what this will look like finished. This is on a 28 count antique white cashel linen by Zweigart. I don't have the, um, the materials for this, um, so what you're gonna see here is just DMC progress. This is a really cheap kit uh, as far as Chatelaines go. I think it's like $39 or something um, for beads and silks and metallics from European cross stitch. So really, really reasonable for a Chatelaine. Um, I just haven't bought it yet. So anyway, so this is the progress that I got done. This was my Mania 16 start for Katie's birthday. Um, I replaced the black with anchor black because I just, I like that really deep black for the contrast of these bright yellows and pinks and eventual reds and purples. Yeah, gorgeousness. And I think this one calls for Gloriana um, Copper, which is one of my absolute favorite Gloriana colors. Um, but don't quote me on that, I'm not sure. Okay, a few more from this, from this box. Up next we have, uh, this is Sugar Skull C3PO by Stitch Line on Etsy. Preview here of what this will look like finished. This is my second in the series of three. I started this one for Mania 17. And I made some pretty good progress. This is on 32 count Belfast in Vintage Stormy Clouds by Zweigart. And I'm stitching it with DMC 3799. Um, and that's what I did my Darth Vader sugar skull with. So this is the C-3PO version. Love it. Pretty good progress for just one day. Uh, I'm a big fan. And so I have the fabric ready to go for the Star Trooper next year. Okay. Oh, good. The next one is one that I'm restarting. <laughs> so I'm showing it to you, but I'm gonna have to restart it. Uh, this was a Mania 17 start and it is Coffee Break 
by DesignWorks. Uh, Needleminder there from No Name Needleminder's Java Queen. And, um, okay, so I got this kit. It came as a kit. And I've talked about this before, but we'll talk about it again. Um, I replaced the fabric. First things first. Kick out that Ada. Not, not doing that. Um, and so I replaced it with a 28 count antique white cashel linen. And I was like, all right, now what? Now I need to sort out the threads. Because DesignWorks kits, it came in a knot. And so I had to sort the threads. Okay, fine. Then I didn't like the card that they were on, so I reorganized it with my own organization system. Not the new one, but, you know. Then I start stitching on it, and uh, these threads are not DMCs. <laughs> so I'm going to rip all this out and start over. Which is fine, because it's not like I got a ton of progress. It was a Mania 17 start. So yeah, all of that there will be ripped out, and I'll start over. Uh, once I replace those threads with DMCs because um, the threads they're not bad per se they're not bad they're just they don't lay right they don't lay like a DMC does they don't sit together the two strands don't sit together very well um, so yeah not not my favorite to work with okay two more in this section and I'm going to wish that I had taken my own advice and eaten something. <laughs> oh, I love this. This is my new series that I am in love with. This is by Cottage Garden Samplings, and this is April's Daisy. Heads up, y'all. Daisy stuff is on sale on 123 Stitch this week. And this is a monthly series where there's a flower associated with them all. I am stitching this on one of my new favorite fabrics, which is a 32 count Belfast in Platinum by Swigart. I'm stitching it using all of the called for threads, uh, which is a mix of DMC's, let's see what this one has, uh, DMC's Weak Style Works and General Art Sampler threads. Um, and I started this one for my birthday this year to celebrate all of the April birthdays during my birthday sale this year. Um, yeah, all sorts of, of April goodness going on in this one. So this will have to get some more attention, and then look, I have another half for another one. At some point, I have no official plans, um, but that one I'm really looking forward to getting back to and finishing up pretty quick. It won't take too long. Okay, next was another birthday start. This was a birthday sal. Was it birthday sale? Yes, it was. Oh, that's why. Okay. Um, this is Dog Lessons for People by Liz and Kate. And I had talked about the fact that I'm converting that dog to a bulldog. Won't take much at all, really. Just take off the tail and trim the ear. <laughs> and then you have a bulldog. And maybe stick its tongue out. Um, and I... For the most part, I pulled threads from Stash. Um, I'm, I think that I ordered maybe a few of them, but by and large, this is, this is Stash threads. If not entirely, and I, I don't know, I'm not sure. Anyway, so that's what I got done on the very first day that I worked on this. Um, I gotta tell you, I didn't think that I would like this. I mean, I love the sentiment of it, and it will be a really great finished piece, but I didn't think I was going to enjoy stitching text with hand-dyed threads. Um, just because you got to pay attention to variegation and the order in which you do things, etc. Anyway, um, yeah, I had a blast working on this. Even on this awful 32 count, I believe it's amber. It calls for natural, but I think I got amber. Absolutely no tag. Um, so, anyway, really enjoyed working on it. And I have no idea what my colors are. Except for that one. That one's aqua. By weeks. So, there's that. Work on that at some point, at some point, at some point. Okay, time to rearrange again and pull out the next box. Okay, so... 
Next, we've got one that I think I'm going to pull out and try to finish. So, I kind of have this pseudo goal of having more finishes this year than starts. And I'm currently up to 26 new starts for the year. So, I need to get cracking. I'm up to 13 finishes for the year. Halfway there. Yeah. Um, and this one would be a semi-quick start or finish. Semi-quick start. That's funny. And that is the Prairie Schooler Double Double. And it's just a little one. And I'm stitching this on 30 count parchment by Weeks Dye Works Linen with Anchor Black. And then the rest are DMCs have started. And so that's where I'm at. Because this is 30 count, the coverage is not great because this is a Weeks Dye Works very loose linen. Um, yeah, I had to use something that was a little bit fuller. So I'm not quite halfway, I don't think, but. Um, because it's just mainly black and big, big stretches of it that maybe I could, maybe I could knock this out. So this one I'm actually going to pull out, um, and keep separate so that I can see if I can't work on that at some point. To finish, this is another one that I think will, um, will be a quick finish. This was a Mania 16 start, and I've worked on it once since then, but not... Not a lot. And there's beads in there because I'm trying to do something with beads. Okay. This is the Dream Catcher by Tiny Modernist. Isn't that just gorgeous? And um, do you see the, not the gigantic pink beads, but the blue beads underneath and then the beads that are in the actual Dream Catcher itself? So those, um, those are stitched. They are charted to be stitched. But what I think I'm going to do is I'm going to string some very large, like, size six, six beads on there, and then they can move. They won't, but they'll be able to. Um, so that's kind of my plan. And what I have done is really not a lot, but I have the ring done itself. And then you can see the top gigantic pink bead for the, um, the holder. And I've started on a feather. This is on 32 count Belfast in Winterbrook by Under the Sea Fabrics. And it's a gorgeous bluey gray color. So, so there's that. That's another one that I could probably finish in five or six days of concentrated effort. Okay, oh, next. Next is this beauty. I haven't seen you in a while, miss. I love her. Earth goddess by Don Elliot. Who doesn't look at her and just love her? Ugh, I'm sure there are people, but anyway. Uh, this I am stitching on 32 count Belfast in dried thistle by hand dyed fabrics by Stephanie. It's this gorgeous, like crunchy leaves color. That's what it makes me think of. And this I started in January. And I got a considerable amount done. I think I worked on this for probably a total of seven days. Pretty pleased. That's pretty good progress there. Um, need to get back to her. I wanted to work on her for Joan Elliott July, but that's kind of how I feel about all of my Jones. I really wanted to, and I just never had the chance. Um, but yeah, Ugh, gorgeous. Joan has some really, really great ideas about color. Oh my goodness. This one hasn't seen the light of day in a while. This is on a 32 count Belfast by Zweigart in cream. And it is the Freebie Flower Series by Ellen Morris Stroh. When was the last time I worked on this, you guys? 
it's been a year at least. Oh my goodness, I haven't seen this in so long. Um, I had these grand plans last year of working on this every month. And that lasted up until February. <laughs> oh, yeah, that's gorgeous. Uh, at some point you will have seen a preview of roughly what this will look like finished. Um, I have changed it a little bit um, to where I am stitching the name of the flower I'm adding it into the border um, for each of them. Oh, this is beautiful. I cannot wait to work on this again. Yeah, that, that has to be a thing. I forgot about that piece. I got a thing for the flowers right now. Don't know. Okay, here's another oldie but goodie. I guess it's not that old. Um, this is a big project. This is the Game of Thrones House Banners by Clouds Factory. And it is my personal opinion that the Greyjoy House should change their sigil from this squid guy to somebody jumping off of a boat. <laughs> That's my personal opinion. Anyway, this Neil Miter here, isn't that gorgeous? Uh, it's Game of Thrones inspired. Um, I think that it's probably related to the Night's Watch. Or it's the Three-Eyed Raven. Could be the Three-Eyed Raven. Is that Brian? Anyway, uh, by Clouds Factory. And I started this for Mania 16 on 28 Count Cashel in Ale by Picture This Plus. And what I got was a whole lot on the Stark House banner. Whole lot. <laughs> Before I decided I needed another Game of Thrones piece, but we'll talk about that later. Anyway, so that is my progress. Um, yeah. Lots left to go on this one. Um, but that fabric is gorgeous, is it not? That ale? Yeah, that's pretty. I forgot that I had this in my stash and I've been looking at, I was doing my window shopping during Christmas in July. I was trying to find a fabric for Autumn on Lazy Bear Mountain. Maybe ale, if I don't die my own, but I don't know that I would ever do that. But anyway, gorgeous. This is one of my favorite whips. And it just does not get enough attention. Who finished this? Calico. Christine finished this. And I was super jealous. Because I want it hanging on my wall yesterday. Glory of Autumn. See, this is what I'm talking about. Game of Thrones country. <laughs> But, I mean, you can't disagree, those colors are just impossible. Absolutely gorgeous. Uh, this, I replaced the fabric. It is 28 count antique white cashel linen by Swigart. Started this in 2015. What even is that? Is that even the right way? No, of course not. There. So this is the... Um, this is the right side, and it, this is the roof of the barn, and this is the top of a tree and some sky. There's like a whole mess of things going on without any true, like you can't tell that unless I told you, which I did. Um, I think that the reason for that is that I was looking for, when I stitch on this, I was looking for opportunities where I only had to use two strands. Um, or one or two strands and, you know, dimensions with the varying uh, thread weights. Anyway, gorgeous. This needs some more love. Uh, my 2015 whips need some more love. I've got a lot of those. Lots of those, but not near as many as I do 2016 whips. Oh, here's one I started in 2016 and that worked on after. 
Oh, this is so cute. This screams fall to me. And it's Halloween, so of course it does, but... Oh, sorry. Uh, this is by Kure Batikure. Forgive my American accent there. Um, this is Halloween in quilt. Oh, I love this. I was looking to start something that I could stitch only on my Q-snap so that I could stitch on something while we were watching football. And that lasted approximately one day. And that was all the progress I got done. And then this went away. This was totally enabled by Colvin. Um, and further enabled by Gem Stitch because she's doing the the, uh, the same designers, um, the, the floral one, um, yeah, gorgeousness, but like nothing done on that, that needs to come back out this fall, I'm so ready for fall, you guys, I mean, like, I know, I always say that, I think I said that first of June, but like, I'm really, I'm ready, I am ready, okay, Next, some more Clouds Factory, some more Halloween, some more fall, and a piece of fabric I haven't seen in a long time and I miss quite a lot. This, I found out recently I bought this chart twice. <laughs> um, I bought it through Clouds Factory's Etsy store as well as through her website. I don't know what I was thinking, but that happened. Um, this is the Haunted House. And this thing is a beast. It's really big. Um, it's really wide. 221 by 228 is the stitch count. And um, on 14 count Ada, mine is on 32 count linen, but on 14 count Ada, it's 16 inches wide. So I'm going to have like no border um, on the sides for this project, but that's okay. That's all right, doesn't bother me. I am using one of my first fabrics from Leslie's um, Fabric of the Month. And it was really one of my first under the sea fabrics. This is 32 Count Belfast in Umbriel. And this is a color that I considered for my Stargazer, mm -hmm. but I wanted to do something different and I'm sorry, my phone buzzing there. <sighs> Isn't that just gorgeous? I love this fabric. It's a little wild. Uh, with this patch here and this patch up here, but it is still just oh, so pretty, so pretty, so pretty. This is going to need some more love. It might get some love for dark October stitching. Um, even though this isn't dark, it's more cutesy. But isn't it gorgeous? It's so silly. Why haven't I worked on this? I don't know, but I need to. Again, a 2015 whip that just needs some more love. Oh, so pretty. You see how I'm not folding things differently like I should be? Yeah, sorry, Trisha. Okay, up next, some more Clouds Factory. And this will definitely be making appearance for Dark October Stitching. Um, this is uh, the horror movie alphabet. And a uh, preview here of what it will look like finished because I don't have the cover page. This is on 32 Count Belfast in Lichen's Moon by Under the Sea Fabrics. Oh, you guys. You guys. I started this mania last year. If I had done one character a month, I'd be like halfway done. I'd be a little over halfway done. Why haven't I done that? I need to do that next year. Maybe next year I'll start doing that on the 13th of every month. Maybe I'll start doing that this year. Why am I waiting until next year? Oh yeah, year of whips. Anyway, I'm gonna do a character a month so that I can get this finished mm -hmm. and hang it up because I love it. I love it so. Yeah, this needs some love in October. Um, 
This is my dried blood fabric. Thanks, Brittany, for naming it that. Perfect. Perfect. Yep, that's going to get some love, and it's going to get folded up just like it was for the last six months. <laughs> okay. Love. All right, next we have a, another Cricut Collection Monthly. And this one's going to look so weird because of the way that I stitched it, or the way that I started it. This is on, I believe it's 32 count ice blue linen, if not 28. It might be 28. I don't know, I don't have my tag. Okay. Um, so this is January. And this was one of the most recent releases. I think this was from 2016. Is when this was, yeah, March of 16. Um, so that's pretty, and <laughs> it doesn't look like anything. I mean, it looks like a lot of little things. So this was my new year, new start, and what I wanted to do was to work my way all the way across the word, and I got to the R. So these acorns are on the R. But I made some pretty good progress. I just got a whole lot of different random things started. I think it's gorgeous. I can't wait to work on this one again. My stitches are so pretty. Do you ever look at a project and you're like, oh, those stitches, I need to start those over. These ones, these ones look good. I really think that might be 28 count, but I'll have to look. Um, and then the bottom of this fabric is for my Christmas stars by Liz Allman that I'm gonna start never because I just don't, I am not in the mood for black work or whatever. Um, especially not a design that's repeated four times that I've already done once. Yeah. Okay, next. I need this book again. Uh, Quilts for All Seasons by Paula Vaughn. This one is not on the cover. This is the only one that Lisa was talking about that she has no interest in. Totally understood why. Because it screams Murica. But it's gorgeous, is it not? This is the design that drew me to this book in the first place. This was, um, somebody was working on this. Was this for the one challenge way back when? It might have been. Um, somebody was working on this for the one challenge, I think. And I saw this and I went, I need that. Where did you get that? And she told me and I ordered it. Um, so yeah, that... That is what inspired me to purchase it in the first place. And then I started this in December of last year for Kate, the Queen of Starts birthday, because I had a double star day that day. And this, because this is what I do for my quilts for all seasons, is it's on 32 Count Belfast in cream. I hope unless this is on antique white. I don't know. Anyway, um, so I got a pretty decent start. Started work on the flowers and some of the, some of the siding on the house. Let me pull that back out again so that you guys can see what I got done. No backstitch yet, but um, in this region, that's where I started. Started at the top. And this is what I'm talking about with, um, I planned accordingly. <laughs> so like I can, well, I don't know. I left quite a lot of border at the top there. I don't know. We'll see. Maybe I'll be able to get two on here. Maybe not. Anyway, there's that. Of the ones that I want to get back to the most, I think November. November is the one I'm after. I mean, obviously, because I'm so obsessed with autumn. Okay, next we have, is this my most recent start? Yes, this is my most recent new start. And this is, oh, I forgot how gorgeous that fabric is. 
It hasn't even been that long. Anyway, this is Lady Bird Fairy by John Elliott. And forgive the plastic. Um, my needle minder here is on both sides, so I'm not going to take it off. But isn't that needle minder gorgeous? Thanks, Belinda. That's why I'm naming it. Lady Bird there. Anyway, there's that. This I had started for John Elliott July. It is a 32 count Belfast in Glacier by Picture This Plus. And that's what I got done. Isn't that so much for this event that, that Belinda and I, excuse me, that Belinda and I started? I am such an excellent participator in events that I am co-hosting. <laughs> I tell you. Anyway, I got it started, and that's really all that matters. I got it started. I didn't get Lady Rose started, um, but yeah, whatever. Anyway, um, so I worked a good chunk of her hair, and I got the out wing, outline of her wing, and the first ladybug, first ladybug body there. Um, so this one will get some love eventually. My other Jones are calling me a little bit louder. Um, but really, they all do. Like I said, I love Joan's color play. Love it. Okay, this next one is actually, I think it's a three for one. I think it's a three for one special. So this is my Mill Hill envelope. I just put them all in here. There's no reason why each Mill Hill kit should have a dedicated envelope. So it doesn't. Okay. Okay, so the first one we have is the Snowflakes. This was my most recent Mill Hill start, I think. No, it's not. That was a lie. And um, here's where I got to when I started it. So just, just some of the blue stitching. There's only two colors of stitching and then a whole bunch of beads and a gorgeous snowflake treasure. So yeah, um, it goes like this. There's that. Next we have a Mania 16 start. This is Snowy Owl Snowman, arguably one of the most popular Mill Hill kits put together by Jim Shore. And here's where I'm at with that. So some snowman wing, we'll go with that. It looks like a wing, it's his arm. And then his head and some of the hat, some of the bow. Basically the turquoises and the creams are done. So there's that. These are all going into the pile of things that I wanna finish so that I can count them towards my, hey, I finished more things than I started this year. Next is love, love, love it. Sorry, that was cheesy. I'm getting a little punchy now that we're into this well over an hour already. And that's what I got started. This was, was this for my birthday, Sal? I think so. I think I started this for my birthday, Sal. But I, I could be wrong. I can't remember when I started this. It wasn't Mania. Yes, it was. I started this for Mania this year. Silly woman. So there's that one. So that's it for the current Mill Hill kits. Um, trying to not start so many of those because they're so easy to just like start them. Try not to start things. Okay, next is a design that I fell in love with last year and has surged in popularity this year. Um, it is a design that a lot of people are particip participating in a stitch along for. I would love to join everybody, but I just I can't because um, it's just not a focus for me right now. But this is Nantucket Rose by Lavender and Lace. And this is copyright 1992. I had no idea that this was from 92. Ugh, she's gorgeous. And what I've started it in is this corner up here. Oh, and this fabric. I forgot. I forgot I was working on this fabric. Oh, this fabric is so beautiful. 
This is a 32 count Belfast in flax, which is kind of gorgeous. And I know that it looks like just any old neutral. It looks like platinum or cream or antique white or whatever, but I think it's, I don't know. It gives me more of a country appeal, I think. Anyway, so I started up there in that corner and I worked some of the tree. This I started with uh, Pearl from Pearl and Stitches, who is focusing on her Instagram account. Go check out her account. She's got a giveaway running. Whew, I spit that out real fast. Um, she and I started a lavender and lace together last year, and uh, that's what I got done. Yeah, she's going to need some more love. Um, there has been some concern over the um, the lace... I'm not even sure what that's supposed to be. Like, what article of clothing is that? Um, I am a little bit concerned about it blending too much with my fabric, so I might have to backstitch it or pick a different color. Um, that is still be to be determined. This is another one that gives me a feeling that it could be converted to be very dark and gothic. Change the colors of her dress, change her expression, Kill the flowers. Gosh, I am so macabre sometimes. <laughs> anyway, that is um, that is my Nantucket rose. And um, I need to work on this some more because it is a gift for somebody. Um, it's a no-deadline gift because um, they don't know that they're getting it. But, um, yeah, I need to work on that. Mm, here's another favorite. And it's ginormous because other than the millhill kits, what do I have that's not ginormous? Honestly. Okay. This is on 36 count cream ivory Edinburgh linen. Edinburgh. Um, and it is my not quite white work by Northern Expressions Needlework. And it's upside down. Of course. This thing is huge, it's about half. Um, this thing is gorgeous. It is 100% DMC silks and all of the Aussie gold that you can find is in this project because there's Aussie gold in the letters and there's Aussie gold in the borders that's running throughout and there's Aussie gold in some of the blocks, most of the blocks. All of the blocks so far, actually. Yeah, lots of Aussie gold. I think it called for nine skeins. It called for seven on 36 or 40 count, but I went with nine just to be safe. And I'll, I will take some more of that, that gold. Beautiful. I love this project. This is a project I have to be in the mood for um, because it's all specialty stitches. The only cross stitch is in the alphabet itself. Um, otherwise, it's specialty stitches. And, like, they're not hard. You just have to think. You just have to use brain cells. And sometimes you just don't want to. Here's another Joan. Guys, I'm getting even more punchy but excited every time. Okay, this one is from a book. This was a Mania 17 start. I love this for so many reasons, but one of the major ones is the fabric. And one of the secondary ones is that I cannot wait to have this hanging in my future child's bedroom because I just love this. <sighs> so cute. Okay, so this is Once Upon a Time and it comes from the Fairy Enchantment book by Joan Elliott. And these are all of the designs featured in this book. Not her most favorite or well-loved dragon, but still very beautiful. Okay. And this, uh, this one here is the Butterfly Fairy, which is a highly sought-after design. Anyway. Um, and 
Yeah. Oh, love this. Oh, that's the needle minder I picked for that. I forgot about that. I bought a different one, um, but this is still a good one. This is the Frosted Pumpkin Happily Ever After Needle Minder that I never started this out for or even had any interest in. Uh, this is Iris by Hand Eye Fabrics by Stephanie, 32 Count Belfast. How gorgeous is that fabric, y'all? Oh, so pretty. And so many colors already. So I started in a little castle sort of mini bubble image there up in that top right corner. And um, yeah, just in love with the fabric. Gorgeous purples and blues. And I love my stitches. I remember thinking that my stitches looked really good. And they do. I was right. So there's that. This is another Joan that I want to get back to real bad. So we'll see when that happens. Whoa, this is an old one. I don't even know if y'all will remember this one. This was a Mania 16 start. And I almost... There are two pieces of fabric in here. Oh, that's right. I'm an idiot. Okay. I almost put this in the UF open because, I don't know, Mania 16 for me was insanity. But um, I haven't. So this is Orient Oriental Paper Lanterns. The designer is Marie Barber, and these are found in the Just Cross Stitch July, August 2015 issue. Um, and I've worked on this a couple of days, um, so this is not just one day's progress. This is 32 count cream Belfast linen, and I have enough here clipped off to do both. I think there's two total. Yeah, there's two total. There's this round one, which is Oriental Paper Lanterns B, and then Oriental Paper Lanterns A is um, more lantern shaped. So there's that. Yeah, haven't worked on that in a while. Hmm. This one is timely. Okay. Oh, let me put this back. Okay, this is Firewing Designs Paladin. This is my um, Game of Thrones inspired piece that I started for Mania 17. Um, there are a series of three dragons in this horizontal orientation that uh, Firewing Designs has put out and I am converting them all to Daenerys Targaryen's three dragons um, from Game of Thrones or A Song of Ice and Fire depending on your preference there. Anyway, uh, Needle Minder there is a long skinny white dragon because Viserion is a long skinny white dragon. And um, this is on Wild Fabric, uh, 32 Count Belfast in Khaleesi by Under the Sea Fabrics. And this cream here is DMC 746, which is a yellow tinged cream. And that's what I got done for Mania this year. So uh, we will have Viserion, Rhaegal, and Drogon. I got them all right on the first try, you guys. Maybe because I was reminded of them yesterday. But anyway, um, so yeah, so he's going to be stitched in 746. He will be back stitched in PB26, which is um, an Aztec gold for reasons I have already talked about. Very cool. Love this. Should have worked on it yesterday. Um, but I didn't. <laughs> so there's that. That fabric. So much fun. Very difficult to find a project for. 
Okay, that's it for box number two. We have one box left. And it's light. There's not a ton in there. So I will be right back after I okay, set up. up next is one that hasn't seen the light of day in a long time. And there's so much left to do on it. Even if I stop here, there is so much left to do. And it I am referring to is, of course, the Prairie Schooler Alphabet. Um, so we have at least in these two leaflets, and I have the rest, but um, in this envelope I currently have uh, A, B, C, and D, E, F, and this piece of fabric will also have G, H, and I on it. This piece of fabric is a 40 count platinum Newcastle linen, and I was working on this so well during the uh, there was like an ABC sal through, um, hosted by Kate through Cross Stitch Finish Line, and um, I was doing so well, and and then I wasn't. <laughs> so this I'm stitching one over two on 40 count using the called for DMCs, and so I've worked on A a little bit and a little bit of B, the smallest little bit for C, and rum for D. <laughs> So yeah, this needs some attention, but there's no emergency on this, and there damn well better not be because 26 letters plus a bonus, um, the ampersand, uh, yeah, there's so much left to be done. Oh, but pulling it out makes me kind of want to. That's the thing, I lost steam and I didn't want to work on this because it's on 40 count. And there's so much DMC 3371 called for in this, and I don't like that color. Uh, Manda, you know what I'm talking about. And so I was just like, I just don't even want to anymore. And then I put this down, and I never, I never looked at it again. Not since. So this is going to need some more love. 40 count platinum is pretty nice. That's, yeah, that's good stuff. Okay, here's another one that... Um, I don't love love, but I like it. Um, oh, there's two in here, that's right. Because there's two on this same piece of fabric. And coincidentally, I don't have the, um, I don't have a cover page for either. So here we go. This is, uh, the fabric is a 32 count Lambswool Jobelin by Wichelt. And the two projects that I have on it are the Primrose Carrot by the Cricut Collection, which was a freebie on their website. It is no longer. They've replaced it with something else, I think. Um, and did I do Anchor Black? I'm not sure. Um, but anyway, that's the progress that I've got on it so far. I don't love this project um, because I don't love Jovelin. And I know that that's not popular opinions around these parts, but <laughs> yeah, I just don't love Jovelin. Uh, can't explain why, I'm just not an even weave gal, I guess. And then on the other side, um, I can show you a preview of what this one will look like. Um, this is by Sharon Pope, it's from Just Cross Stitch, May, June 2015. Um, and this is the Teacup Herbs series. This is Sage, or it will be. And this was a mania start for 2016, they both were. Um, I haven't worked on this since. Or have I? I'm not sure. If I have, then it was only for one day. But anyway, so that's that. Neither of these really call to me ever, even though the, the carrot would be a quick finish. And the sage, not so much. There's kind of some confetti going on in that project. Um, but they don't call to me. Okay. Here's another sal that I started that was totally left in the dust. And I am remiss for that because um, this fabric is gorgeous. And again, I don't have a preview of this. This is a mystery sal that's not yet done. Um, the fabric is Hand Eye Fabrics by Stephanie Winter Wishes, 32 Count Belfast. The project is the Quotes to Live By by Stitchrovia. And 
I am so pleased to see that right now. Okay, so part of the reason that I lost steam and had no interest in continuing with this, I shouldn't say I, I didn't have no interest. I had no interest, but the reason I lost steam on it is this. I didn't want to fill this in with all of that pink. And I don't have to, and I'm not gonna. I'm not gonna. I'm just gonna let the fabric shine through. And the other blocks that are full coverage, I'm also gonna let the fabric shine through on those. But I thought that I had some of the pink done, like up in this corner or something, and I was gonna have to frog it out. Ooh, this fabric is gorgeous. Winter wishes. Yeah, that's a nice soft gray neutral, if you're looking for something like that. Yeah, um, so that's a relief. I don't have to frog. So maybe I'll pull this out and try to work on it. <laughs> okay, next is uh, one of Floss Tube's favorites of my projects. Um, and it's one of my favorites as well. Um, it is The Reader by Joan Elliott. And everybody says I enable them with this and consider yourself enabled. Isn't she gorgeous? Stitch her. Um, this is on a beautiful fabric. This is 28 count cashel in Gingerbread by Pictureless Plus, which is just a stunner of fabric. And this is a project that I started for Mania 16. Pretty good progress there, I'd say, considering all of my other Mania 16 progress. Mm. Yeah. That's gorgeous. I love this project. Every time I stitch on this project, it makes me think of when I put a lot of time into it. And at that point, um, I was listening to The Girl on the Train by Paula Hawkins. And so I kind of forever associate this project with that, which is kind of weird, but whatever. It's a quirk of mine. Yeah, this is gorgeous and needs more love. I need the love on this project some more. Um, so at some point I will. I don't think that I'm going to do Year of Whips 2.0. Um, I think I found it too restrictive, especially here at the end. But, um, and I know that I have the choice in this. But if I was doing Year of Whips 2.0, uh, this would be on the list. No question there. Love me some reader. Ooh, this one's fun and hasn't seen a light of day in a while. This is my only Alessandra Adelaide. And this is why it's fun. Look at all of those threads. Okay, so recipe for a magical night. This was purchased from the website, hence that express charts business down there. Um, I printed this off out in black and white on purpose because I'm picking my own colors. It's a grab and go kind of thing. My fabric is a 28 count Lugana in Misty Morning by Under the Sea Fabrics. This is no longer available um, because uh, the dyes were discontinued um, or something, something along those lines. And so here's what I have done. And I do not remember what these colors are. Um, I know that the purple in this swirl right here is Fiberlicious, but other than that I have no idea what colors are in here. Um, so I'm using a mix of Fiberlicious and Moselle, cell, or Moselle cottons, excuse me. Uh, so just a mix of things. And that's a lot of fun. Uh, I need to spend some more time on that because that would be a really cool thing to have at Halloween next year. Not this year, there's no way it's gonna get done in time. Okay, here's another Mania start that, um, Mania 16 start that is semi-popular. I don't know, I've shown it a couple of times and people are always like, ooh, that's pretty, what is that? So, oh, this is on Jublin too. And I think it's the same, so I misspoke earlier when I said that was a 32 count, it's actually a 28 count. This is the Red Quaker Sampler. And this is a free design. 
Um, it is still available as far as I know. Um, and it is by Needle Knowledge and Cheryl Fall. And looking at that, doesn't that look awful maroon and orange? Well, this is a pick your own colors kind of thing. Um, and it only calls for two colors. So a darker and a lighter shade. So I went maroon and orange. Um, and this is on the same 28 count Lambswool Jublin. And here's where I am so far with it. Isn't that pretty? These flowers are highly suggestive. They do not look like flowers, they look like lotuses, which also have another similar appearance to something. Anyway, um, this thing is gorgeous and I need to pull this back out. Yeah, that's just, that's just really pretty. Okay, up next was a Mania 17 start. And this is a project that I really want to work on this year. Because I'd really love to have it done in time for Christmas this year. I don't think it's going to happen. Because we are of whips. But it is uh, Santa Claus is Coming to Town. Or Santa Coming to Town by Stitch Rovia. And this was from her Etsy store. Um, sweet little reindeer nail minder there. And this I am stitching on Ice Crystals. Yes. This is 32 Count Belfast in Ice Crystals by Hand Dyed Fabrics by Stephanie. And I got a simple little start for Mania 17. But I am, I love what is already done there. Absolutely gorgeous. Really looking forward to getting back to this one. Um, and this fabric. It's like a purpley blue. Very pretty. Okay, next is another of my more recent starts um, and this is a project that I had planned on working on every Sunday and I haven't worked on it since the day that I started it. Um, but I'll try to make up for that. This is the Stark House Banner by Lolita Made on Etsy and a preview of what it will look like finished. This fabric is 32 Count Belfast in Valyrian Steel by Hand Dyed Fabrics by Stephanie. And I'm stitching it using DMC 762, which is like a pale blue white color. And I've got just the most excellent, significant, teeny tiny little start. But that's okay. Um, so there is, there is that. Um, I just never got, I got barely any stitching done yesterday, and it, it never even occurred to me to pull this out. So, such as it is, five to go. Just five. We are 74 through. <laughs> Gosh, that sounds humongous just saying. I wish you guys could see it. Yeah. Okay, next we have from the Cricut Collection. This is not a monthly. This is the seasonal one that I started from Mania 16. And this is summer. Gorgeous, isn't it? And this is on a 32 count Belfast in pastel lilac, I believe. Hot dog, my memory is better than I thought it was. I've worked on this a couple times um, since I started it for various things. Um, so that's where I'm at currently. I have the first M done, the sun snowflower, sun snowflower, the sun slash sunflower, and the U. Um, and the U I think is mostly done except for backstitch. So there's that. Love those the monthly series and the seasonal series. I'd really like to do just all of them. This pastel lilac, you can't tell. It, I know it looks white on camera. It is barely like a blush of pink. Um, just barely. And you have to be looking for it to be able to see it. Oh, this project. This is arguably in my top five for projects that I started for Mania this year. Um, yeah, I, 
I need this. I need more of this in my life. Okay, this is by uh, Sandy Orton for the Cooler Design Studio. Uh, this I got from the Cooler Design Studio website, which you can get a lot of their PDFs from. Uh, gigantic, gorgeous clay sunflower needle miner there. I love that one. This is the summer sampler. So much to look at, and it's all so beautiful. And guys, like, I'm not a summer girl. I mean, like, obviously. Obviously. But uh, I just, I love this. I love this so much. So this is on a 32 count Belfasting cream by Zweigart. I, I love this. <laughs> I know I sound like a broken record, but I just do. So this is one day's progress and this was a Sunday. So I was able to get quite a bit done and this was actually a double start day now that I think about it. Um, And I just, I kept going. I kept going. And I could see myself doing that with this project. Love this. I'm going to need them all, the whole series, the whole collection, um, at some point. But this one I need to spend some more time on. That's another one that, like, if I was doing Year of Whoops 2.0, this would, this would make the list. Because I want to work on it so bad. Okay, here's another project that um, I'm going to have to restart. And here's another one where my memory keeper is falling apart. Okay, there we go. So I'm going to restart this so that um, it's more centered on this fabric. Because I just want to. Um, this is the Taurus by... Jodi Rice of Setsuma Street. And she's releasing this year these cartoonish zodiac symbols. So, so pretty. And I started this on, I have no idea what this fabric is. It's an off cut from something, so I used the other part of it for something, but I couldn't tell you what. Anyway. That's my little measly sad start from Mania 17. Um, yeah, I'm going to take those stitches out and move, move it more center because that's just my preference. I think I had talked about trying to fit two on this one piece of fabric, but whatever, I'll just move it so that I'm more comfortable during the stitching. I wish I knew what this was, but I don't. I have no idea. Anyway, so there's that. I'll get back to it eventually. It would be such a quick finish because it's big blocks of color. Okay. Here's another one that I was like, I'm going to work on this one block a month and I'm going to have the whole thing done in no time. And then I stitched the first block and I was like, all right, I'm done now. I'm trying to see what the fabric is. What's it called for? Milk chocolate. Okay. So this is the Tingle series, which is the companion to the Jingle series by Lizzie Kate. And this is on 32, or no, 28 count milk chocolate linen by Wichelt. Stiff as a board. Um, I finished that first block in a day. Back when I was stitching, like, a, an ungodly amount of time in one day. Um... And then I just totally lost steam. And this is going to be so cute when it's done. So cute. Yep. Love it. Need it. Need to work on it. Need to want to work on it. Um, this calls for a bunch of weeks dye works. I pulled, it's mostly threads from Stash that I used. Um, with a couple of ones where I ordered the called for. Yep, 
need to work on this some more. This fabric is scratchy. And this is one that really needs to be folded in a bunch of different directions because I won't ever wash it because hand-dyed threads, but refold it. This is the last one. One left. Can't believe it. And then I have the job of editing. <laughs> this project I started for Mania 16. Back when chalk was the rage. And I thought, I'm going to stitch that whole series. And then I ordered the called for fabric and I hate the called for fabric. <laughs> yeah. But that's how it goes. This is uh, the May hands-on design, a year in chalk, plant seeds of joy. Two colors, one of which is, no, they're both gassed. They're both general art sampler threads. But what gets me on this is the fabric. I just don't like it. Uh, I don't like it. This is... The called for fabric is a 30 count, but one, two, three stitch at the time didn't have the 30 count available because everybody and their brother was stitching this series. So I ordered the 35 count. It is weak Dye Works gunmetal. And so it's a very dark gray. I don't like weak Dye Works linens. It's not my favorite, but I need to work on this and finish it. Um, or not, maybe not. This is not a good note to end on. That's funny. Plant seeds of joy. And I'm like, oh. I may not finish this. I don't know. We'll see. We'll see. I may just UFO it now. But I'm not committing to that just yet. Because, I mean, it would be so quick. I mean, it would take nothing at all to have it done and then to say I had it done. It's only 45 by 70 stitches. It would be so quick. So quick. I don't know. We'll see. To be determined. I'll let you know at a later date. Oh, goodness gracious. We did it. <laughs> Whip parade. Woohoo. That was fun. Um, I know that I showed everybody all of my whips back in early January, end of December. Um, but not everybody wanted to or was able to watch that because there was no talking. It was just me flashing up pictures of all of my projects. Um, and I know that some weren't able to because I had it playing to music and copyright. Um, anyway, where was I going with that? Oh, so I was just really looking forward to doing this whip parade. Thank you. Quick shout out to whoever started this. And I don't know who it was, but you are awesome. And thanks for starting this trend so that those of us that have too many whips can talk for way too long. <laughs> um, I am going to head off. I don't think I'm going to have a whip update this week just because I just showed you everything. Um, but I'll resume my whip updates next week. Um, I do think I have another video coming this week and possibly two. One that will contain my August plans because I probably should talk about that. And another something else. Um, but we shall see if either of those two things happen. I have a lot to do this week. Uh, my first task is to go have something to eat and uh, get to editing this monster. So I just want to say a quick shout out to all of you. Thank you so much for watching. Thank you for spending all of this time with me. I hope you got a lot done, and I will see you next time. Happy stitching, and as always, be kind. <laughs>